Hey everyone, CZ Fangirl here, back with another episode of a bathrobe gunsmithing. Yeah, I kid you not, I am actually in my bathrobe. So, um, anxious to get this going. So, I got, anybody that's watched my previous videos, you'll know that I got a bunch of stuff from Caesar Shop in Slovenia. And got the magwell, got the shortened grips, and then uh, probably one of the parts I was most excited about was the short, thin, or slim uh, slide lock pin. Anybody that's shooting the Shadow 2 will be able to appreciate what a difference having less bulk over here where your thumb ends up riding there is a, a little bit of a notch there that's been tapered out um, but your thumb my thumb anyways because it's short ends up rubbing against the spot and it gets really uncomfortable after a while anyways so I bought these guys here and was really excited about um, using them or replacing the stock with this but or sorry before I go any further so they are meant for the CZSP01 Shadow 2 Tactical Sport and Rami all right so let's install this and then let's see here what happens so all good it's in there but That's not good. So I contacted Caesar Shop, who actually has a gunsmith on site. And I did, uh, before I contacted them, I, I looked at the obvious problems. And one of the problems, which was really evident, was this notch here is too short. Like it falls too short. The... Um, the slide lock spring ends up resting on top of this area here instead of resting in this little groove. So the first thing I did was I, before I even contacted them, was I carved out a wider groove so that the spring would rest in there. So that was great. That worked. Um, then I'll have uh, some videos attached to this showing uh, the difference in the width between the stock trigger pin, or sorry, the stock uh, slide lock pin and this one. And as you can see, have it against the background, the pin or the stem here on the stock is longer than um, the stem on the flat. So what uh, the gunsmith at Caesar Shop said was that I needed to remove some material around this post here and to carve out this little notch, which I had already done. So I started removing a bunch of material and then noticed that on here, this one has not been modified, but you can see that there's some raised areas here it's not very much but basically all of that needs to get gone so if you order these they do not the ones that they have currently in stock uh, if it says spo one shadow 2 tactical sport and rami those ones do not fit without modifications so anywhere that you see these little raised areas so around this pin here or the stem and around this 
area here. There's actually one millimeter difference between this point here and this raised lip here than there is on a stock trigger pin. So this area here is 6.4 millimeters and this gap here is 5.35. So it entailed a lot of grinding. I used a cutoff disc and essentially ground off all of those areas that were raised and pretty much thinned it out um, half a millimeter on the paddle side and then another uh, not even a, a millimeter or a half a millimeter it was uh, way less than that but anyways I did it uh, very slowly and very carefully checking progress as I went along without just bulk removing um, an entire millimeter of metal so fits and functions so just be aware of that if you are ordering the um, flat slide lock pins which I highly recommend oh my gosh these make such a difference they're yeah the, the gun is just comfortable I tend to ride up high on the slide anyways and now especially with my thumb riding on the extended paddle my other thumb is going to want to follow suit instead of you know being down here where it normally would be and back I, I tend to want to have my thumb almost parallel with my trigger finger and then ride the slide or the uh, the frame a lot further forward but this is the bomb like seriously this um, this low profile slide lock pin is the bomb um, Ben Stoger also carries them and he's clear on his website that it does need some modification and, and gunsmith installation is required, but you can do this at home. I uh, thought I would, you know, pull out more of my jewelry tools, but honestly, I uh, just used uh, a grinding cutoff disc. Um, let me see if I can bring this over. Hang on, you're going for a ride. So I used this and then you can um, angle it to however you want to use it. The other thing you're going to need and I highly highly recommend this is a barrette needle file. You're not going to be able to get in there with a large file. You're going to need something um, smaller like this like a needle file but the thing with the barrette is it has a safety side on both sides so it has a non-cutting edge Okay, so you can see it has a non-cutting surface along the edges and then this is the cutting surface just underneath because when you are filing um, against the posts, you don't want to have that cutting into the post because you're going to end up notching the post. So you need to have a barrette file and it's called a barrette file. And the other thing too for you guys, don't muscle your way through the filing. It's not going to work. You need to have a light touch. And I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration on filing because in my experience, you guys all want to do carpentry work. <laughs> um, let's see here. I'll do it on this one here. So your filing is going to look like this. It's going to be very light. not a heavy hand at all and you're going to remove way more material doing it that way as opposed to and you don't do this please do not do this because that doesn't remove any material um, uh, the cutting of these files is only on the forward push and that's how you remove metal all right so do as you're told <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, give me a shout. And um, again, highly recommended on the flat, um, thin slide locks. These are really, really the bomb. If you want to have a comfortable grip on your shadow too, 
yeah, that's the way to go. So go get one, Caesar Shop in Slovenia. Thanks for watching.